FeatureCam 2016 now provides a fine-tuned control of the non-cutting moves when using 2.5D Vortex toolpaths. Control has been added to allow the increase of the feed rate on the non-cutting moves, with additional options to retract and lift using either an automatic value or user-defined threshold. These can be set individually or combined to achieve an optimum toolpath with the benefit of a reduced cut time. So in this example, what we have is an aerostructure part, and I've created or pre-created a number of bosses that cut the outside of this component. Now all of these are using a, a, a obviously a two and a half D feature, uh, but in each case we're using the vortex toolpath. Now if I go ahead and look at the first one, just to highlight under the strategy page, I've got my step over type set to vortex. And if I go into the roughing operation and then into the step overs area, you'll see there's a new button here that allows us to change the non-cutting moves. So in this case, if I click on this, it opens a new dialog and you can see I've got a number of options available to me. So the first uh, section uh, deals with uh, any kind of retraction for the non-cutting moves. So what this means is uh, as we get to a non-cutting section, we can choose how the uh, tool will behave uh, as to whether it retracts uh, and also the length of the toolpath segment at which it will choose to retract. Now by default this is set to never, so that's what this first feature is. If I look at the pull down options, you can see I've got an automatic option which uses an automatically calculated threshold, it's not user editable. And then I've got uh, another option which is longer than. In this case I've got a user editable threshold that I can change. In this case I could set it to say 150 millimeters, and any toolpath segments that are longer than 150 uh, will be uh, changed into a retract. Underneath this I have the option to increase the feed rate for non-cutting moves. So this allows me to, if I check that box, enter a feed rate, so any areas where the tool is not cutting, and uh, for example uh, what we'd call a back trochoid, I can add a feed rate value into here, for example 6000 millimeters per minute, and the toolpath feed rate will increase where it's, where it's non-cutting. Now in this case I'm just going to leave these uh, as they were before, just leave those as the default never, and what I'm going to do uh, is give a comparison between those different options for each of the different features. So I'm just going to close this form off. I'm going to go ahead and calculate uh, the toolpaths. So just press play. So for each of these different features, in this case, just increase our simulation speed. So the first feature, as I said, is never lift. So this uh, is just the, the default behavior toolpath. The second one is going to use the automatic lift, so where it will choose an automatic threshold to decide whether it retracts or not. The third toolpath uses a lift threshold, so lift longer than, in this case, 150 millimeters. so any segment greater than 150 will become a retract move. Then the last two will both use the increased cutting feed rate up to 6 meters per minute, with the final one being a combination of both the lift longer and the feed rate increase. So those are my six features. So let's just clear the toolpath, let's just hide the toolbox, open our results window, uh, and what we'll see is quite a, a, a dramatic difference between not only the toolpaths but also the overall cut times. So the first one is, is never lift, so uh, I can display that toolpath on the screen, and we can see here um, that as it uh, goes into the non-cutting move or the back trochoid, um, in this case uh, it's not choosing to lift. Uh, and it's also constantly going at the original uh, feed rate, which was 2 meters per minute. Uh, if I choose the next one, so this one uses the automatic lift, so where it decides that it, uh, it needs to retract uh, over a, um, whatever the, the internally calculated distance. So for example, you can see uh, this large portion at the back here, um, it's chosen to retract across there. Uh, moving on from the automatic, I've got the user-defined threshold. Um, now if I click on this one, you can see there's a difference between those two toolpaths. So in this case, my user-defined threshold of 150 millimeters has allowed more retracts on some of these segments as well. The one underneath this, 
Um, this is the non-cutting feed rate uh, uh, increase. Um, so in this case, you can see uh, if I compare this to the first one, we can see we've got a slightly larger trochoids uh, as the tool moves into the non-cutting area because we're increasing the feed rate uh, to nearly 6 meters per minute. Uh, and then the final one you can see uh, is a combination of the two. So this has the increased feed rate, so we can see the larger trochoids on these outside corners. But also you can see we've got the retract moves uh, in, uh, in these areas where we go over that 150 millimeter threshold. Also, uh, as I mentioned before, um, we also get a dramatic difference in some of the cut times as well. Uh, and these will vary depending on the shape of the, the component and so on. Um, but in this case, we can see we've got those uh, ordered from start to finish. Uh, we get a relative decrease in machining time. So the one without any lifts, you see we've got uh, a total cut time of 8 minutes 29 seconds. Uh, when we chose the automatic, this dropped by nearly 30 seconds uh, to uh, 8 minutes uh, uh, almost uh, exactly. Uh, when I introduced the uh, lift longer than 150, uh, in this case it dropped uh, even further to 716, so again quite a dramatic uh, dramatic decrease in, in cut time. Um, then switching it to uh, use the non-cutting feed rate, so going up to that 6 meters per minute, again we got it even faster, so this is compared directly to this one, same toolpath, only slightly larger back trochoids uh, with an increased feed rate of up to 6 meters per minute. So we're down to 7 minutes 9. And then the final one, uh, as I said, is a combination. So it uses that threshold value uh, and also that increase in feed rate up to 6 metres per minute. So in this case, you can see we've got uh, 7 minutes and 4 seconds as our optimum uh, toolpath time. Uh, we can also have a look at the NC code. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead uh, and just turn off some of these toolpaths um, and just have a look at the uh, the comparison. So if I choose the uh, the never lift and just, uh, just recalculate this toolpath, So just to generate the NC code, and you can see here, uh, here's my NC code. Uh, if I scroll down, um, you can see we've got no real introduction of, uh, of feed rates as we work our way down through the code. So it's using the original start feed rate, which in this case was 2 meters per minute. So if we change this to the, uh, in this case I'm going to choose the uh, the last one which has the increase in feed rate and the non-cutting moves. Uh, and again just recalculate the toolpath just to generate our NC code. So there's that toolpath with those lifts. So we're going to have a few segments where we get the increase in feed rate. So going to the NC code you can see there's my 2 meters per minute. Already you can see we've got extra feed rates being introduced uh, throughout that toolpath. And if I scroll down, uh, you can see we do get up to that maximum uh, feed rate of 6 metres per minute on some of the segments. So it's clear to see the benefits there. We get a much, uh, a much greater reduction in the overall cut time uh, and therefore the, uh, the part can be reduced a lot more efficiently.